the Synod speaks. The Nine didn't pull their punches, I see, Veselin said wryly as he passed the letter to his grandmother. Do you think anyone will listen? They'll listen. Listening is easy. Will they do more than listen? Taking action is hard. Her fingers kept working her needles as she spoke, stopping only occasionally to pull on the ball of wool. Looks to me like the throne put a finger on the scales. That's how I'd read it, and that don't bode well. I think our cousins are going to have trouble ahead. Veslin pulled up a chair at the family table. A fight between the Senate and the Synod, then? he asked. He was eager to know more, and nobody understood what went on at Anvil better than Grandmother. She'd spent half her life there when she was younger, according to Leobov. Well, I don't see any other way you could read that address. Well written, I'll give the Wintermarker that. That one could have been a Volhov. He'd trust them to make a deal with the Charnel Lord. But as I read it, they were calling on the Synods to think again. Well, do you think they will? he asked. Think again, I mean. Well, I'll have to do some hard thinking. We're stretched as it is, but we're winning right now. But the Synod seems dead set on picking a fight with those heathen fools. And now for good measure, they say, let's start a war with the trees as well. It's one thing to stand up for what's right. That's the first and last rule of courage right there. It's another thing to pick a fight with every schlachter in the tavern. Veslin tugged on his beard pensively, weighing up what he was hearing. Difficult choices, he muttered to himself. Well, they always are. Unless you're a white stag, the old woman replied, laughing at her own joke. Overview the Navarre Assembly has overwhelmingly backed the mandate to begin the final battle against the Valorn to defeat it once and for all. But they are far from the only Assembly to speak on the matter. The Assembly of the Nine was emphatic that the Empire must be willing to make this sacrifice now and called on every nation of the Empire to take up the call. Two individual nations also did so, the League and Varushka, both raising clear statements of principle in support of the Navarre and their Assemblies backed them with a greater majority. The response elsewhere was more ambiguous, with Dawn, Highgard and Urzen all passing statements apparently in support of the Navarre's decision, as well as conflicting statements calling on them to wait for a more fortuitous time, but none passed with a greater majority, possibly reflecting the mixed views on the matter. Thus it is the League and the Varushkins alone at this time who are ready to stand with the Navarre. Other nations might yet take up the call, either for or against this great ambition. Five Cities the League Assembly singled out the great debt the Empire owes the Navarre, recognising the work they have done for centuries to shield civilization from the Valorn. Folk in the League are always keeping score. Every favour owed, every debt incurred, they must always be repaid in full, lest there be a reckoning. The statement of Kaspar Yakovich von Holberg did not shy away from reminding the League of the debt they owed the Navarre, and called on his country folk to stand with them, whatever decision the Navarre made. The Navarre made their position clear, now the League must confirm they want to stand with them. But, as a few citizens have pointed out, what will standing with the Navarre mean? What aid do they require? The League has only two armies, which will certainly be important in the battle against the Valorn, but not enough to turn the tide. But they do have five senators. If they throw their weight behind the Navarre, it would make a potent voting bloc. Given the clear signal by the League Assembly, can the Navarre anticipate the support of the League in getting the Senate to authorise attempts to raise new armies, to do whatever else must be done? The League also possesses great wealth and crucial skills like engineering, with positions like the Master of Rings and the Chair of the Wolf. Will those League merchants who are masters of the Imperial Bourse lend their backing to the Navarre and help to create a legacy as Il Volpe once did? Could the League find a way to allow the Chair of the Wolf to work on projects needed to fight the Valorn? Could they encourage the Master of Rings to find a way to commission the Navarre Way Houses? There is a lot that could be done if the will of the nation reflects the wishes of the Assembly. The common people of the League are mindful of the debts they owe the Navarre, and are ready to stand with them. The question is, how best to aid them? The League Assembly could enact one of the following three competing mandates. The greatest assets of the League are our ambition and ingenuity. We send named priest with fifty Liao to urge every citizen to commit everything to finding new ways to fight the Valorn. Even the most impenetrable forest may fall one tree at a time. The greatest assets of the League are our wealth and prosperity. We send named priest with fifty Liao to urge every citizen to dig deep to support the fight against the Valorn. All that is worthwhile is shared with those who deserve it. The greatest assets of the League are our loyalty and determination. We send named priest with fifty Liao to urge every citizen to remember where their loyalties lie. 
the truly virtuous are loyal even through hardship and misfortune. If any of these mandates is enacted, they will lead to one or more opportunities to take concrete action to help the Navarre. Such actions will be expensive, but nothing great without cost, as they say in the League. The mandates are competing, so whichever mandate is passed with the greatest margin will determine the nature of any subsequent opportunities. The shrewd business folk of the League understand that war with the Valorne will not be a matter of a few seasons campaigning. This mandate will set the tone for the League's participation in that campaign. If any of these mandates are enacted, it will commit the League to playing the fullest possible role in the war against the Valorne. Citizens will expect their leaders to do whatever is needed to start the war, and to finish it. They will expect their assembly to stick to the course and not get distracted by other struggles. For the next year, at least, no statement of principle raised by the League Assembly that calls on citizens to support another cause, be that civil or military, will produce an effect beyond Anvil. The mandate will focus minds on the conflict with the Valorn. Our Navari Cousins the Varushkin Assembly has taken a similar approach, reminding their people of the debt owed to the Navarre for the aid they rendered when Kask was attacked. The reference to cousins is particularly effective in a nation that places such enormous importance on family. It is common for Varushkins to use familial titles to show respect and friendship, or, as in this case, to remind people of how important it is to remember the support each member of a family provides. The Varushkins are well placed to provide help. They have three powerful armies, and, like the League, they have the potential to wield significant influence in the Imperial Senate. The unanimous backing of the Varushkin senators would ease the path for the Navarre to raise their new armies. And, of course, the throne is Varushkin. While she must think of the Empire, Varushkins hope she will not forget their family. As a nation, Varushka can lay claim to be as rich as the League. Their wealth comes not from commerce, but from the abundant resources of the North. The Navarre will need mithril, which Varushka possesses in great quantities. Will the Overseer of the Eternal Shafts of Time and the Bargainer of the Iron Tower help to provide what the Navarre need? No nation produces more artisan resources than Varushka. Could they use those to help their cousins raise their new army in Hersinia? When a member of the family is in need of help, no stone is left unturned. But only fools rush in. The wise decide on a course of action before they fight. To choose that course, the Varushkin Assembly can enact one of the following three competing mandates. The greatest assets of Varushka are our prosperity and our resources. We send named priests with fifty liao to urge every Varushkin to spare what they can to help our cousins. Let no coin go unspent. The greatest assets of Varushka are our wisdom and resolve. We send named priests with fifty liao to urge every Varushkin to use our knowledge of the dark powers to choose the lesser of two evils. The virtuous apply what they have learned. The greatest assets of Varushka are our ambition and iron will. We send named priest with fifty liao to call on every Varushkin to do what must be done. Consequences are the price of ambition. If one of these mandates is enacted, it will lead to one or more opportunities to take concrete action to help the Navarre. Such actions may prove controversial. The Varushkins understand that life is about making difficult choices and sometimes one must cut down the tree to save the forest. The mandates are competing. Whichever mandate is passed with the greatest margin will influence the nature of any subsequent opportunities in the following season and beyond. Wise Varushkins understand that war with the Valorn will require a long and painful sacrifice. This mandate will set the tone for Varushka's role in the war against the enemy. If any of these mandates are passed, it will commit Varushka to playing the fullest possible role in the war against the Valorn. Citizens will expect their leaders to do whatever is needed to start the war and to finish it. They will expect their assembly to stick to the course and not get distracted by other struggles. For the next year at least, no statement of principle raised by the Varushkin Assembly that calls on citizens to support another cause, be that civil or military, will produce an effect beyond Anvil. The mandate will focus Varushkin hearts and minds on the conflict with the Valorn. The Fate of the Empire the Assembly of Nine have given their backing to the Navarre's decision, stating clearly the Empire must be willing to make the sacrifice now, subtly referencing the pride of the Navarre in the process. As a result of their unambiguous clarion call, people in the other nations remain receptive to taking a stand on the war with the Valorn. That means any of the National Assemblies that have not yet spoken with a clear voice could use a statement of principle to respond to this dramatic moment. Statements that are passed this season that get a greater majority, that urge clear, concrete action on the Valorn, one way or the other, will lead to a mandate to commit the nation to a course of action. 
After this season passes, the moment will be gone, and any statement of principle will be no more likely than normal to produce a response. Second Steps The Navarre have made their fateful decision, sending shockwaves through their nation. Two-thirds of all stridings have left the trolls to begin preparation for the coming war, and every war needs troops to fight it. Details of the immediate outcome of the recent decision are found in the The First Shot Wind of Fortune.